join me. It takes me a while. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Tonight we've had a non-public session RSA 91-A colon 3 uh, meeting at 6 o'clock and we're going to start with public comment. Anyone wishing for public comment? Please come forward. I want to take my sunglasses off. The reason I have them on, I had laser surgery. <laughs> I'm not supposed to have the bright Ooh. lights. But, um, Victor DeMarco, I live in Milburn Avenue, Hampton, New Hampshire. I'm also a part-time employee for the town. Uh, I have just two quick items, one for the board, and I guess it's not going to be too good because I was going to talk to the general public for a minute, <laughs> but uh, they can't hear us <laughs> because if it's as bad as it was these previous weeks, can't hear it on the TV or even direct streaming, but that's irrelevant. I was wondering if the board would join me in uh, contacting our representatives and our senator regarding the state police budget. Oh. I have been told that they have cut uh, the state police weekend coverage by 50%. Uh, now, Mr. Bean, I, know, I, I think this is just retaliation. <laughs> I, I, I honestly do. I, I, I think this is like, we'll show you who the boss is. Uh, I don't think they have been listening to how difficult a task our town has had to just get police officers, you know, to process them and have them on duty. Uh, I've worked for the town for 45 years. I was here in the six, early 60s before, I think, any of you, for the riots with the National Guard M1s, M1s, <laughs> with the band hats and going, what is this? This is before I was a police officer, right? And I, I went, wow, what goes on here? That was the Labor Day riots, right? I, happen, I also happened to become a part-time officer in 1971, was on the department for three weeks when Jethro Tell concert arrived and 10,000 people decided to go. <laughs> and we had another semi-problem. I'd like the fire department. We don't have anybody to call <laughs> for backup. If the fire department has a fire on the beach, Portsmouth, they'll, co they'll come as far away as Dover, mm -hmm. down here. And they did uh, on A Street. We don't have that. We, every department is a bare minimum. I mean, we, we can't expect any help from uh, Northampton. Maybe Seabrook could send one guy over. Maybe Exeter, who we have very little communication with. Maybe, maybe, maybe send a per one person over. We're at a bare minimum, and I'm not, I, I could say this because I spent 30 years as a police officer. I'm not, the chief is doing a fine job, the whole department is doing a fine job. My son will kill me because he knows I'm talking about it now. Good, good thing he's on vacation. Because he, I promised him up and down I would never speak <laughs> about the police department. But I'm not talking about the police department. I'm talking about coverage. We, the casino is now having concerts of names I have no idea who they are, and I happen to run the park lines. So for the first time in history, I had one of my employees tell me, I, I won't say what concert or anything, <coughs> call me up and say, uh, Vic, uh, we got quite a crowd. I said, what do you mean by that? He goes, I've never seen these type of people. Mm -hmm. You know, so I don't know what that meant. You know, I know what it meant, but I've never had that happen before, <laughs> you know, and, uh, oh, yeah, we made some money on it, you know, <laughs> but uh, I don't, so I yeah. notified the police department that this, you might have uh, your hands full, and we're on our regular staffing. Yeah. I never uh, believed that we ever talked about staffing in general public. 
we never did this before, but of late, the last few years, that seems to be an okay thing to do, is to tell the people we are shot-handed, we don't have enough cops, we're down to 25 instead of 55. It's a little scary. Yeah. And the reason I talk about the state police, let's get back to them, the mere presence of officers in a confined area like that has a, a ability to calm things. You know, I think we were the first time town that I know of in New England that went to white cruisers, and people couldn't but understand. What are you doing driving around on a white cruiser? Well, we came to the determination. We wanted them to see us. We didn't want to duck behind the billboards anymore or in the alleyways. And Northampton had seven breaks once, and we went up, and I was a detective at the time, and talked to the burglars and said, how come you never came down, <laughs> you know, at the Hampton? We, he says, every time I turn around, I've seen a white car. <laughs> so that's why we did it at that time. And that shows to me that we need uh, the colonel, who we all know very well, mm -hmm. the older police officers know very well, yeah. worked at Hampton Beach for a number of years in a different capacity than, I, I'll just leave it at that. Mm -hmm. And we became very close friends with everybody, and he did a great job. Uh, and it was basically attempting to take the drugs off the beach. Now, you are aware we're having heroin problems up the whatever. And the whole idea is to save their lives, not to arrest them or anything. And now we're giving police officers stuff to be able to shoot them. But well, we need our representatives and our senator to do something, because she said that the budget wasn't completely shut. Uh, the second thing, I wanted to talk to the general, pu uh, to the general public, and I'll do it and make that real quick. Uh, we have elected officials in this town in different positions, uh, Silver Dick to be one, that puts on the yellow page, says don't vote for anything, mm -hmm. right? I don't think the general public understands what that means. <laughs> you know? Uh, he, he's elected official doing things, whatever, you know, and, and we had a uh, former chairman of the board do the same thing. You know, <laughs> talk one way and support a different plan. So I'll make this real quick, okay? There has never been a problem with the school. I was on the budget committee for Winnicott High School two terms. I was on the budget committee here. I was on the creation of the uh, council. I, I've been around. We're going to have to wrap it up. Okay. Uh, can I come back after someone else spoke? I just have one, one, one other thing to like say. Six minutes. We're we to we spend seventeen thousand dollars a year to educate our students from twelve to twelve from kindergarten to twelve. Mm -hmm. That's over two hundred thousand dollars a year uh, for their education. Yeah. If you have two kids in the school system, that's four hundred thousand. Nobody pays four hundred thousand in taxes in twelve years. They have to understand that a uh, hundred thousand on the police department or something like that, it's three cents on the tax rate. It's so <clears throat> minor, it, it's not even mentionable. So if the general public could look, if you can explain better at the end, thank you very what much this means, for speaking I tonight. It. Anyone thank else wishing much. to speak yeah. tonight under Around public comment? Yeah. Thank Seeing you. none, yeah. we're going to move on to announcements and community calendar. <laughs> Mr. Waddell? Yes, I want to remind people that this Saturday at the State Park, May 16th at 9 a.m., is the um, state chance to go down there and talk and give your input into what's going on and for the state to explain what's going on. It will be upstairs in the reception room, so also it will be a good opportunity for people to go up there and see <clears throat> how beautiful the place is and nice view. So it would be a good idea if as many people as can can would attend that. Thank you. Mr. Bridal? The only thing I have is uh, on the uh, 28th, which is a Thursday night, the firefighters are doing their Chowder Challenge, their ninth annual Chowder Challenge. Uh, and the benefits go to the uh, Firefighters Burn uh, Foundation. Uh, it's a good chance to go down and ch taste some of the best soups and chowders mm -hmm. in, the, in the whole town. Or if you feel like you're a good enough cook and want to try it, yeah, I'm sure they're always looking for cooks. Yeah, so. Um, that's again. That's uh, uh, 
Thursday the 28th at McGuirk's starting at 6 p.m. How many entrees are you, have you got in it? Um, I don't believe I'm here that then, so oh. I don't know if I have anything or not. Uh-oh. Mrs. Wolseley? Yeah, $5 <coughs> cover charge. $5 cover charge, yeah. Um, I, we have a notice from the uh, Post 35 of the American Legion, just for general public knowledge. Uh, the Memorial Day parade and ceremony will take place Monday, May 25th. The day will start with services at the Hampton Beach Marine Memorial, 8 a.m., and the parade will commence at, at 11.30 a.m. from the parking lot next to the fire department. The parade route will go up go up Winnicott Road, Route 1, and High Street, and then on to the High Street Cemetery. Estimated time about an hour, and then there'll be uh, little festivities at Hampton Academy from 12.30 to 2, hot dogs, etc. So I want to thank the Legion, and if anyone would like to participate, uh, Monday, May 25. And... I was going to announce about there's a, a community walk that the Tuck Museum is sponsoring, and I believe it's this week. I forgot my little piece of paper that I was given, but Karen Rains is doing it, and I believe it starts at 1 o'clock. It will be like from 1 o'clock to 3 o'clock. Uh, so anyone interested in that can get in touch with the Tuck Museum. Uh, moving on. We have the consent agenda. Number one is the 2015 timber tax warrant. Number two is entertainment license. Three, parade and public gathering license. Yet the Historical Society downtown walking tour is on 516, so it's definitely that day. And number four is use of town property for uh, town office sign for Winnicunnan Auto Show. Number five is street closure permit. Number six is request of no objection to outdoor seating for service of alcohol and food. Number seven is request of no objection to outdoor seating for service of alcohol and food. And will we accept the consent calendar? I'll, well, I'll second, but I, I would like to make a couple of observations. I would like to see any kind, anything like that timber tax warrant come in under the assessing officer. I really don't think that's suitable for the consent agenda. And on 6 and 7, the request, request for outdoor seating for service of alcohol and food, um, I did uh, check with Fred earlier today, and these are existing businesses that already have the permits, uh, but you wouldn't know it to look at that. So okay, if, well, number if six ownership. is a new business, and number seven right. I happen to deal with, and right. they had something very major different that happened to them this year, right. but, and that's why it's on. But what I'm saying is the state requires new permitting if there's a change made, and I just think it would help. Well, these, to, these are things that happen beyond their request. I, I just Be, think beyond that... Their, beyond what they could help. That's why I it's understand on that. I don't have a problem with that. What I'm trying to say for the information of the public, and I'm the public too, it would be nice if it was just saying renewal because of change of ownership or change of circumstance. It doesn't look like this isn't naked, brand new, they never had this before. So I just thought from an information point of view it would help because not everybody remembers this stuff every year. So I'm just making a very little tiny point. Is all those in favor, unanimous. Next, we have the approval of the minute, approval of the minutes for April twentieth. I'll make a motion to approve them. I'll second it. All those in favor? Oh, oh wait. Oh, my goodness. <clears throat> I just have one correction on page seven of eleven. It's up near the top, uh, just below Selectman Bridal. Uh, I said it boils down to a matter of respect. We were talking about pe people being messed up down in the, uh, the beach area. And it's, then it says, all our owed a quality of life. It should be all our, A-R-E, owed a quality of life. So it's just one word, but it doesn't make any sense if you have O-U-R in there. So if we could have that one correction, I will appreciate it. Any other changes? All those in favor, unanimous. Uh, approval of April 20th, non-public. Also move. Second. 
All those in favor? Unanimous. April 27th, 2015. Also move with corrections. All those in favor? Or Wait, corrections. Oh, oh, I think you said no comment. Well, uh, on page, <laughs> it's, it's spelling that I have to say really drives me nutty. First of all, page 8 of 19, right about in the middle, uh, we were talking about the Taylor River Bridge, and uh, the town manager said the state's not going to move the contaminated material behind the dam. And I said, do we have anything in writing that they will not breach? It should be the dam. Yeah. I didn't say they wouldn't breach contamination. Right. So if we could, somebody could stick the dam in there. And then proceeding to page 10 of 19, Town Council is C-O-U-N-S-E-L. A Town Council C-O-U-N-C-I-L is a governing body. May we please have all the Council and Councilor um, references in here corrected with corrected spelling. And that goes all the way down to the bottom of the page. So I would, and then uh, Selectman Bean, the next to the bottom paragraph, uh, you said something to the effect that con conservation has no uh, confidentiality. It should be uh, should be conservation. It says conservation there, so we should correct that. And I think that's the only big deal. But please, can we get spell check? Any other changes or something? Second, the motion. All those in favor, <coughs> unanimous. I abstain because I was oh. here. Four and one abstention. Thank you. Moving to appointments, Mr. Tinker. Good evening. Good evening, Ed. I'm here this evening to present uh, the revaluation, the 2016 revaluation contract for your review and approval. Um, we have reviewed it through town council. Um, it has been uh, revised um, in some areas, sent back to Vision. Vision has approved those changes. This is the revised contract that you have in front of you. Uh, if you have any questions, um, <coughs> I can answer those for you. Um, I do want to, I should let you know the amount of the reval um, total cost will be $146,000. Okay. Questions, Mr. Bridal? Nope. Mrs. Wolseley? Oh, just a couple of observations. Uh, we did, uh, Ed did mention to us earlier that the uh, reval representatives will have appropriate uh, identification on them so if somebody's on your property or knocking on your door they should have identification if they don't you can throw them out of your yard um, it says that this is going to cover approximately 10,000 parcels yeah at the, which is right. uh, pretty amazing and on the uh, <coughs> the at the end um, at this it says in the presence of municipal officials but I don't know, is this just for the chairman to sign or because they're not? Chairman, you know. town manager, however you'd like it okay. done. I think uh, right, Mr. Well, I'll move that the town time. then I'll move that the town manager sign uh, in behalf of the Board of Selectmen. Mr. Bean. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, this contract and I have read the contract, thank you, uh, Mr. Tinker. Is this for every single piece of taxable property? Every single town? piece, correct. Every single correct. Utilities tax exempt properties every single well the, the actually the, the contract truthfully isn't for utility they aren't utility experts so they will, they will not be valuing the utilities okay, and just for full disclosure on that so, so the utilities and what utilities will be exempt from this um, uh, we have five utilities which will be Unitil uh, Northern Utility Aquarian Water PSNH um, Seabrook power plant. Of course, there's four four people there. Next era plus three additional partners. I believe that's okay. And and um, I'm sorry. Uh, you understand? Right. We will. Yeah, we will be valuing um, Com uh, Comcast mm -hmm. and Fairpoint, though. We will be valuing those. Good. And it's just just um, and it, it's it's not a minor point, but it, the the contract doesn't read that way that there's any exclusion unless I missed that. I think it is. I'd have to get to the page for you, but it does in the mention the lack of no t no utilities. Okay, and just going forward for future um, board information, if you could provide um, what the costs are to the taxpayers of Hampton for um, assessments of those properties that uh, are not subject to this contract. 
a cost to do those. And, okay, I can do that. I can get that for you. Yeah, I'll have that. Thank you, Mr. Tinker. You're welcome. And Mr. Waddell. Yeah. And, and this is what we had figured was going to cost anyways, right? This was? That was that was the figure that was presented to the board, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. And, yeah. Good. <clears throat> so, we have, oh. Yep. Yeah. We have a motion, I guess. And is there going to be a second? I move to have the manager sign on behalf of the board. I'll second. All those in favor, unanimous. May, may we hang on for one second with Ed? Just really quickly. Mm -hmm. I think this is something that people don't necessarily <laughs> see, but your memo dated April 20th on the 2015 sewer abatement rate. Yes. Just so the public is aware. Uh, because there are many uh, areas of town where there is no sewer, Mr. Bridal, right? Absolutely. The intent of the sewer abatement is to return to those taxpayers who are not currently on the town's sewer system as of April 1, 2014, the amount of money is paid in property taxes relative to the total appropriations of the municipal sanitation system. The 2014 appropriations were determined to be 1,558,257 which includes 1,361,257 relative to account 4321 administration and 142,000 relative to account 4326 repairs and maintenance plus 55,000 relative to the wastewater treatment plant maintenance. The total appropriations of 1,558,257 is then divided by the town's 2014 taxable value of 2,781,983,500. 2 resulting in a 2014 sewer abatement rate of 0.56 uh, cents per thousand of assessed value and results in a total sewer abatement refund amount of $96,198, including applicable interest as of May 1, 2015. I think it's important for the public to understand that those who do not get sewer service are eligible for an abatement on their properties. It's not a huge amount of money, but it's certainly a courtesy for those who do not have sewers. And when they get sewers, then they won't have to get the abatement anymore. Correct, and we do we do keep a uh, an Excel spreadsheet actually of everybody that does right. not have access, right? Because it is access to correct. So they're everybody even if they haven't hooked up, as long as the sewer line goes up the street, right? If they're they're in proximity too, they wouldn't be getting correct. Yeah, right. But we do have that compiled list, so there's no right. more filing abatements or anything. It's actually we have the entire list yeah. that we keep um, right keep track of you on yeah. a yearly basis if there's any changes. Yeah. And I think it's important for the public to understand that that's done every year by the assessor. Are there uh, uh, ever any changes? Um, we've had a, uh, since I've been here, uh, I won't, I'll say at least one that I know of that actually ended up attaching to the SOAR. Um, but typically, very rarely that's just a change. Um, the number's mm -hmm. been around 600 and it's, it's been basically that number since I've been here. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you, Mr. Yep. Tinker. You're welcome. Moving on, um, we have Diana Martin, Director, Parks Director, and Recreation. Recreation. Good evening. Good evening. Diana. No ball game tonight? Tomorrow. Oh. It's so cold <laughs> out, though. Okay, so um, I haven't been here in a while, so I got quite a bit of stuff for each of our of our departments. Um, we scheduled the fields in the parks maintenance department. We've scheduled the fields for the upcoming softball and baseball seasons, as well as lacrosse and tennis. And the co-rec leagues are all in the men's league are all starting today and tomorrow. We have taken down the winter decorations with the Hampton Fire Department. We've contacted all previous employees. Uh, for the Parks Department, all are returning. The supervisor kind of officially started April 1st, although he's been in a numerous times over the winter to take care of the parks and the facilities, especially with the crazy winter that we had this year. We've asked permission to order the pieces of the Kids' Kingdom Playground in a couple of weeks ago, and with that permission, we're looking into which pieces we'll be purchasing first. We picked up the Kids' Kingdom sign over the winter, and we'll be putting that up in the next few days, next few weeks. We've been in touch with Urban Tree to help get the tree down, trimmed for the new lights at Eaton Park. They've been down once, but still need to return to finish the job. See the typo there. Um, they've taken down a tree, but they still need to trim another one. 
Um, we're in the process of ordering and placing benches around town. We are working on some issues that have come up over the winter in the concession stands and the fields and parks. True Green Clem Chemlon has started their maintenance program for the town hall, the gazebo, and the tuck field areas. The bid for the scarif hire is done and out right now. It should be back next week. And the bid for the bus is also done, and I'm just waiting to get that back so I can send that out. The roadway that runs between Tuck Museum and the Tuck Building, help me remember the name of that, boss. I think it's the loop. Uh, green. The okay. loop, exactly. The loop. Yeah. <laughs> the loop <laughs> um, is scheduled to be paved in the next few weeks. So that's a huge, that's huge because that's been atrocious for years. Um, the Tuck, the Tuck Building has been re-roofed. And um, I'm working on the siding bid right now and collecting quotes for the new doors for the Tuck Building. So most of the um, warrant article stuff is done. In the parking lots, the Ashworth Ave parking lot opened up on March 29th and again April 4th and 18th for a couple spring skip days and for a couple concerts. Uh, thanks to the DPW for removing most of the snow in those lots. Um, except for this past weekend, the total that we have made for this season is $6,625, and we actually haven't really started yet. I mean, our opening is, our big opening is in June, and we do have two concerts coming up next weekend. We're also in the process of taking applications and interviewing people for any job openings that we have in the lots and preparing returning employees to work again for this year. So we're working on all that, getting everybody rolling. For rec programs, we're currently taking applications and interviewing for camp counselor positions. We've had a numerous, we've had a number of meetings for the Corec Softball League and have had a couple of Hampton Men's Softball League meetings. We completed the schedules for both leagues and handed out the equipment. And the season starts tomorrow for Corec. And this is wrong; it actually started tonight in the men's league, and hopefully the lights went on for the first time tonight. <laughs> We finished our boys' loco high school basketball league for the season. K-2 sports program is now in its fourth session, which means the children are playing indoor games. We had our annual spring April senior citizen meeting a couple weeks ago, and our May meeting is this Thursday coming up. Ski and ride program has finished for the 2015 season. Our department bought Red Sox tickets for the 2015 season. Our tickets are different prices this year. One of the games was at, um, is at Fenway. The other one was at Yankee Stadium. So we still have tickets for Red Sox versus the Houston Astros for Friday, July 3rd. And then the Red Sox versus Yankees game was on April 11th. And I believe the Red Sox won that game. These prices include the tickets to the game and the bus ride down to the game. Art class with Mrs. A is finished for the season. We've had a travel show for our Ireland trip on April 7th, and we have taken in some registrations for that. We've been taking registration for <coughs> Oxford Casino trips. One was on April 30th, and the second one May 21st. Each is $25. We have two trips set up for the Conry Scenic Railroad. So that was such a popular trip for May 27th that we added a 28th, and, both, and that was only $50 a person, and it both had failed. The Strawberry Festival that we do in partnership with the Fire Department is set up for July 14th, and this year we'll be returning to the Victoria Inn for that event. Uh, we've set up three theater trips for the North Shore Music Theater. They include Dream Girls, which is on June 3rd, Saturday Night Fever for August 2nd, and Sister Act for November 4th. Each are $64 per person. We set up a trip to Agunquit Playhouse for August 5th to see nice work if you can get it, and that is also $64. Our brochure is out. We have set up a number of summer programs and camps that are on the website and in our summer, spring summer brochure. We're still putting them the, together, the tennis lesson flyer, but the rest is set up. These include Tuckfield Summer Day Camp, Surf Lessons, Archery Lessons, Seacoast Runners Camp, Challenger Soccer Camp, Granite State Track and Field, Lego Robotics, Rock Climbing Camp, water class, Watercolor Classes, Arts in the Park, for which we have seven show dates, Field Hockey Camp, Flag Football Training Camp, Warrior Hoop Camp, Camp A Lot of Fun, Theater Camp, Red Cross Babysitting, and Basketball Camp with Donnie Seals of the Harlem Wizards. We're taking registration for a luncheon for the seniors to DeMillo's in Portland, Maine for July 29th. 
We just completed a fun shopping trip to Freehope Port to L.L. Bean, including lunch in Portland with shopping at the Christmas Tree Shop. That was May 6th. We're also working on commercials for our upcoming programs. We had a trip to the Capitol Center for the Arts and Concord to see Celtic Thunder, which was April 8th. That's one of the last. That was, uh, Renee was horrified because he drove to that, and that was the last snowstorm of the year. It's awful. Awful trip back. We're taking registration to our day trip to New York City for May 16th. We had the Easter egg dig this the weekend before Easter, and with the help of many volunteers, we buried 10,000 eggs again this year, and that day was a blizzard also. That was awful. But the kids had fun, so that's what counts. We had the fishing derby last Saturday in the beautiful weather, and we had been handing out the kids' licenses in the office to fishermen that came in for the event for the past, I'd say, four weeks or so. Renee and I attended a career fair at the junior high school last Friday. We've been um, offering a bone builders program for seniors at the Tuck Building on Mondays and Fridays, which has become so popular we're taking a waiting list for it. And the last thing I wanted to mention is that we have a road race that's going to be uh, June 28th. It's called the Kids, Kids Run the World, and you can sign up for that in our office. It's uh, $20 to register, and we're focusing on children, but the road race is open to everybody. And the proceeds will go to um, charities that will help children across the world, and, as, and some of the proceeds will go to the Rest Department for Children's Programming. Um, lifeguards, we're currently taking applications for lifeguards for this season, and we have been since February. We're in the process of calling other previous staff to see who's interested in returning for the summer, and we're working on the schedules for the summer. For donations and grants, uh, we got $2,000 for Loco Sports to run our high school rec basketball league, the local league I talked about earlier. We got Easter baskets from Playland Arcade and the Harris Sea Ranch for the Easter Egg Dig. And we get some chocolate hearts for the seniors from Uda Pinio from Gorman's Luncheonette. And the last thing I wanted to mention is that we have a new face in our office, which is Marissa Carell, who used to be one of our Tuck Camp counselors. She studied at UNH and graduated with a bachelor's degree in recreation management and policy. And now she's our new operations assistant. So we're hoping people will pop by and say hello to her. Questions? Mr. Bridal. I got a couple here You're going through this list. Like you said, we haven't seen you in a while. <laughs> uh, the supervisor starts April first. The supervisor. The supervisor of the, of the oh, parks. Oh, for the parks department. Right, right. Um, is that early enough? Should it be earlier? Yes. Be, you know, how late does he go in the fall? He will work. I mean, we have flag football and soccer until the middle of November, and then the end of the year is just the general cleanup and lock up and taking the tennis court nets down and stuff like that. So how about in the spring? What's in the spring? Yeah. Well, we have. I to mean, this is a, a lousy winter to try to do this, but usually we have people on the fields a lot sooner than. Yeah, we. Uh, the policy that we've had is that people can't get on the fields until the second weekend in April. So that was uh, putting someone out there April 1st to just check the fields, the playgrounds, all that, which has kind of come, it's, it's a, the date doesn't even really matter anymore because people are using the playgrounds all winter long. Of course, they didn't this past winter because we've had a really bad winter, but as a general rule, that's why there was a parking issue there because people are using the playgrounds and, and the fields and the parks all year round now. So that's something we should look at in the future to, totally. to for for more hours for him. Yeah, because I know yeah. he. Do, I mean, he's there a lot. He, he mean, is there a lot, and he does a great job. And and but you know, there's three or four months of the year that he's not there. And are, are we neglecting our fields and our buildings because of? We that? are, <laughs> we are, but we we only have so much time that we can give him at this point right now. Parking mm -hmm. lots. I know you. I know you've had them open. Mm -hmm. How's your staffing for that? I mean, I, I was down there Thursday or Friday this week, and it was beautiful. And even all the little parking lots were all open down there. And um, Well, there's a new policy in place for returning staff, and they have to do a, the drug and alcohol test again, and they also have to do the background check. So I only had a couple, I only have a couple employees that have been okay to work so far, and we're still taking registration registration. We're still taking applications for new employees. So as 
this week goes on more and more the employees are trying to get back from colleges and stuff to come and take that the test and stuff is there any way that we could maybe not obviously this year but next year if we had some <coughs> earlier on some some employees that that might be able to work those off shifts so yeah or that good day and because we might as well get some of the revenue as you said you've already made six thousand this year before the season's even started i agree we've only got we've got a couple of high school kids uh, most of them are in college though but we've got a couple of high school kids and we have a few adults that can come out a little bit earlier and, and I'm, I'm glad to see all the the events you have here that not only for for kids but for adults and seniors uh, I like seeing the shopping trips and stuff. Oh, we have all kinds of senior trips. You're, you're going to, um, you, you talked in here about doing some advertising. Is that the Channel 22 type of? Yeah, we put stuff on Channel 22, but um, Renee and I <clears throat> in the past have made some commercials for some of our programs just to let people know about them, and we're going to continue, we're going to bring those back in helps of advertise, better advertising. Maybe we can convince Max to to help you out a little bit with, with some of your scheduling and future scheduling and yes, all, that all would that be the good. rec department has to offer. <laughs> so, thank you. Thanks. Mrs. Bridal, or Mrs. Bridal. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Now, um, you do a great job always, and I don't know how you keep track of all the things you guys are doing. Road race is going to be run where? We have our annual road race. It used to be called the I'm Trying 5K, and then we have the, we're just changing the person that we're working with for the 5K, but it's the same road race route, which goes from Winnicunit to Winnicunit, goes down Sanborn, goes down th those neighborhoods over there, comes out on um, Little River, up Mace, and then back over. But it's only a 5K, so. Okay. And everybody runs really fast. <laughs> Okay. Well, I'll tell you, I uh, I run in some of those. Ra I run in that race every year. And I'm like a 32 to 34 minute guy, and I'm sort of in the middle toward the back of the pack. So we just don't want to be tying up neighborhoods for hours. Right. But that no. doesn't look like. And this. we've scheduled it. I've scheduled it on a Sunday morning at eight o'clock, so that in, I'm in hopes of anyone that's going to church for 7:30 mass is already there. Yeah. Anyone going to nine o'clock mass or after. Good. Won't get in their car until after yeah. the road race is actually yeah. most of the people have gotten back. So it's a pretty compact yeah. time frame. And is the bathroom at Church Street all shined up and ready to go? It's perfect. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Bean. No, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Director. And Mr. Waddell. Excellent. <coughs> I mean, and if anybody in town <coughs> complains that there's nothing to do, they're crazy. Right. Because you, you run such a good program with so many activities. And like Rusty said, for such a wide range group. Uh, that it's just super. Um, question, over the winter, was there any damage to the playgrounds and stuff, or did most of the fields come out pretty well? We've had a little bit of damage on <coughs> the playgrounds, and we've had some tree branches come down. We've got one tree over at Lock Road that we got to get okay. picked up, but nothing major. So we lucked out, really. Yeah, we right? had a few fencing issues, yeah. but other than that, no. Yeah. And when you say you still have applications open for lifeguards, do you have a difficult time getting lifeguards? Mm -hmm. Yes, and I just actually talked to um, Tom over at Rye, Rye um, Fire Department, and uh, he said he called me to see if I had any applicants for him because he doesn't have enough lifeguards either. Wow. That's and actually I got some emails from people in New Hampshire Recreation and Parks about uh, three weeks ago, so I was collecting all their emails to see what they were paying, and more than half of them said they didn't have enough lifeguards, and they were from all around the state. So it's kind of a chronic thing. I don't know what the problem is. Yeah, that's funny because it used to be a job people really wanted. I know, <laughs> and it's the best paying job too. Wow, really good paying job. Crazy. Okay, thank you very much. You're welcome. Yeah, I was also going to ask about the lifeguards. Now, in the past, the state has helped find other lifeguards. Is that going to be the case this time? Um, I don't know how we're going to do I don't know what we're going to do about that. I talked to Jamie Sullivan about it the other day and we're I think we're going to ask them about seeing if we could find some lifeguards from them or see if they want to return and take them back over or something to help out get the lifeguards out on the beach. Mm -hmm. So Do you keep... Uh, but they too have a problem getting lifeguards. Uh, so. Yeah. And do we have, like, a, on the bulletin board out there, do you have um, a notices of the jobs that you're looking to fill? 
I don't have it on the bulletin board, but we have it on the website. We had, um, I'm not sure if we have a Channel 22 slide, but we should if we don't. I know it's been in the newspaper a couple of times, too. Mm -hmm. So well, Thank you, and thank you for doing a wonderful job. Thank you. We appreciate it. All right. What day is the run? The five? June 28th. And we need volunteers, if any of you would like to volunteer. Well, Phil, you want to run? I was at the fishing derby the other day, and it was very cute to see all those kids out there fishing and having yeah. a blast. So it was really hard. Yeah, it's a good time. Oh, and I did want to mention the Garden Club is having a plant, plant sale this weekend. Just food for thought for people here at Town Hall. Thank That's you. That's all. Thank you. Next, we have Chris Jacobs, director of the DPW. Good evening. How's everyone? <laughs> Good, how are you? Good. Uh, on the agenda, the first thing for me was uh, permission to bid for truck chassis and utility box for replacement of truck or unit 24. Uh, this is Bobby Walker's uh, vehicle. The sewer and drain department uses it. It's the one with the utility box attached, uh, fully equipped to respond to um, emergency digs, loc uh, location of services, um, repair of services. They also use it to catalog and inspect the new ones and ones being repaired. Um, does everyone wish to have a cut sheet from the CIP? Or is that so we know which vehicle we're talking about? Yeah. Good. The other thing I photocopied is <coughs> Vehicle repair list for thanks to the RT from the R RTA software, which shows what the cost has been to maintain this vehicle over the last year uh, to 18 months since we've had the software in Good. place. Good, thank you, Chris. Thank you. About 14 months ago, this is the vehicle that um, had to make a choice of whether to put it, uh, keep it on the road or not keep it on the road, and that we, because the transmission went. Uh, if you look at the RT software printout, it breaks it, the software breaks out uh, the cost to operate this vehicle by major areas, i.e. cooling system, fuel system. So it also has down there the automatic transmission. Uh, we paid $3,082 to uh, replace the transmission. Reason being at the time is that occurred um, uh, just before Valentine's Day in February last year. We still needed it uh, for the winter. Uh, we anticipated that we would you know, need it uh, well into the springtime. It was, a, in looking back, it was a very good decision. This is the piece of vehicle that, uh, when I say Bobby Walker uses it, he plows uh, James Street, Beach Plum Way, uh, those tiny streets, narrow streets over on, uh, off of, uh, in, ancient, highway. ancient, I'll say antique, and I knew that was wrong. <laughs> um, both mean the same or similar thing, but two different streets. Uh, so it's the kind of vehicle that uh, we want to keep him in because it, it does not damage as many things uh, working out of that vehicle as he would a different vehicle. So the idea is to replace this vehicle. Um, this year it was put in the CIP, and then I discovered that there is <coughs> approximately forty-six or 48000 in the capital reserve fund for equipment. Uh, and going through this process, uh, town manager reminded me that I needed to come here first to get your acquiescence to at least advertise it that way or to uh, put it out to for a competitive bid. My staff has asked me to just bid the truck, and then once the truck is selected, um, we would actually build, bid out the utility box because um, kind of find out they're not all the same. Uh, I just thought we'd bid it as a package, but they said, no, it's, there's too many um, combinations and that we should just bid it out, bid the chassis out strictly, and then bid out the utility box. 
So that's what I'm here for, is just to get your acquiescence to enter into the bid process to uh, replace the vehicle. Mr. Chairman, I move that we uh, grant permission for the director to bid the truck chassis and subsequent utility box for replacement of the engine. Second. Uh, uh, any further discussion? Mrs. Wilson? Yeah. Chris, we have so many pickups, a lot of them with plows, and I know the stuff wears out. Nothing in the fleet as it exists now that you could use in lieu of buying a new one? I mean, I, a lot of them are assigned because I've got your list from 313-2015. You know, um, I never did ask that question to staff. What it would mean is probably uh, the question would be, is the truck that Frank Swift and Toby Spainhauer handed down to their foreman, right. is that frame and chassis strong enough to um, <clears throat> support, let's say, a new utility box. Mm -hmm. uh, if it is, um, and I can cost-effectively switch that out, <clears throat> then I will not proceed forward with bidding it out. Mm -hmm. I just, it's, it, I think it was 19 right. at last count, and I know you need trucks, but... Right now, Unit 19, which was no, Mark Richardson's two-wheel, I mean, yeah. is off the road. <coughs> it's ready to be a trade-in. Uh, unit 23 is off the road, ready to be traded in. I actually have three trucks out back that okay. are going to be traded in. Okay. 23 is even off my list from <coughs> March, so I don't... That would probably be part of the bid package so that I'm right. uh, not... Because you've got... 26 is a 2004 Chevy pickup with plow. That's got 72,000 miles on it as of March. Yep. And uh, you, you do have a couple. There's a one-ton uh, number 36... I don't know if that's appropriate, but it's just, just a matter of reviewing because the vehicles and the number of vehicles we're carrying has been a question mark, and I just I just they're, don't want to see coming, us. Yeah, they're coming down. We're, we're definitely not in the mode of adding to the fleet as much as we are as trimming it or uh, getting a better utilization of it. Okay. Thank you. I appreciate <coughs> that. Other questions, Mr. Bean? No, sir. Mr. Wardell? Uh, I think I'm set. Mr. No, I, I just, you know, this is a vehicle that's, that's used more than just the eight hours a day, Monday through Friday, because this is the one that goes out for all the calls mm -hmm. and all the necessary stuff. Um, to, put a, to put a new utility body on another used truck, I don't think is pr productive. Mm -hmm. I think uh, yeah. putting it on a, on a truck that we're going to keep around for, obviously we've had this one for yeah. at least 10 years. Right. It's yeah. not just, a, just a, another pickup truck that's... Right. No, it's, it's right. It's more than that. So right. I see. I, I got no problem with this at all. So we have a first could, and a second. Could we have the stipulation included that Chris said that if he can find an alternate or another way to if put there's the something on in my fleet, I can put a box. But I appreciate. On. Yeah. What I will he not said. come forward with it. This is simply a, a motion to uh, grant permission to bid. Mm -hmm. If he finds it necessary. If it's a, right. I'm not accepting an, an amendment to the motion. I've got a motion. I've got a second. All those in favor, unanimous. No, I'm going to abstain. abstain. Bless your heart. I know you need it, but we get. Funny. All right. And, and you wanted to bless me with a tree warden. <laughs> yes. I, I want to bless you with a tree warden. <laughs> You're a brave man. Did you want to talk about that? Just make a motion. It's a job that Keith Noyes held. Uh, the former yeah. director. Um, I do think it's important. Um, it's. I look at it as a. Um, it's a safety issue first of all to the residents. Secondly, it's a, an aesthetic mm -hmm. issue, and it does have some environmental concerns with it. Uh, I think the trees are important, but at the same time, um, safe trees are important. Uh, just the other day, there was a uh, snapped top of a tree, a spruce over at the cemetery. Mm. Went over and looked at it. It looked like a guillotine ready to drop. So that was not an issue for me uh, to make a safety call and say it needs to be removed now rather than later. So um, I do understand the ramifications of the job. Um, would not take it lightly. Um, remember an incident over on Dearborn of taking a tree down oh, prematurely? Yes. That it, so I do know it has an aesthetic issue. Um, 
So it, it does have to be handled with some diplomacy. <coughs> and uh, I just envisioned when I signed in for this task that eventually that role would come along with it. Mr. Welch, do you have anything to add? No, other than the statute requires that uh, I appoint subject to confirmation by the Board of Selectmen. Okay. Do we have a, a, mo uh, a motion? Need a motion to, motion? Motion to, to confirm. Yes. I'll make a motion that we confirm his appointment to, as the tree would. Set, we have a second. All those in favor, unanimous. Do we knight them? While you're at it, yes. the park at Lock Road, and mm -hmm. I know I probably should have told Diana this, there's an old willow there that's coming down that looks oh, like yeah. it's uh, yeah. in bad shape. Before well Mr. Say. Jacobs leaves, may, may I just, I saw your, your short memo on the mechanical packers, <laughs> and uh, I agree with you. Are we going to be able to schedule a time with Mr. Jacobs to really go over the rolling stock before fall. I mean, your point on the mechanicals is absolutely, you know, on target. And when they were purchased, we were aware that there was going to be a maintenance problem. Oh, yeah. Is there some time to sit down? We've got to go over this rolling stock. We've just got to do it. Well, of course we so. set up an opportunity, your convenience, but before we really go digging in, Say before Labor Day, maybe. It was an issue that I thought we would definitely get at this summer. Good. As part of the CIP process to overall look at it, where we go and uh, what we face. You're wonderful. Definitely. Thank Chris you. And Chris, one, has, Chris oh. has prepared a very lengthy CIP report for the board. Good. So. And one more um, quick one. Uh, thinking ahead, because we've just got a few months now on Warren articles. Um, if you want to revisit the washdown shed, and I think we desperately need to, whatever configuration you think is sensible, and I know you're maybe considering a, a, a different location, probably a more appropriate location. If we can get that on the radar, uh, I would certainly appreciate it. I think it's something the department desperately needs. That was part of the, uh, the 913,000 CIP request for Good. the upgrade to the septage receiving area. Excellent. It makes sense to put the wash down bay right next to the septage area because of the amount of grit that will come off the vehicles, that's the only logical place where to handle. Right. Otherwise, they'd have to duplicate that, sept that grit handling capacity somewhere else. Right. And uh, the other thing is the layout, the turning movements of getting a trailer in right. and out works in that location. And you've got to have a way to clean your vehicles on site <clears throat> yep. effectively. Thank yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you, Thank Chris. You. Thank you, Chris. Yep, no problem. Moving on, we have Acting Fire Chief Jimmy Ayotte and Deputy Bill Kennedy. Deputy Bill Kennedy. Gee, I thought I could. I, I think I knew that. Good. Good oh, Feels like we were only here last week. <laughs> <laughs> you were. We were intense, um, and indeed. And in last week's discussion with you, um, I made it known that we have concluded our bid process for the fire engine pumper, which was part of the Warren articles for 2015. Um, in moving forward with that, we posted a bid and had the bid out for three weeks. I believe I emailed everybody on the board uh, an email last Wednesday indicating to you that I'm coming before you, as it states here in the agenda, for concurrence and waiver from the purchasing policy section 718-4, B1 and B2. Um, these are needed and in place, if you'll indulge me, because we have a bid that is actually over $50,000. We also have fewer than three bids. We received two. This bid was open for two weeks. And we, I'm sorry, three weeks, we received two bids that were complete, and um, we have brought them home. But now I am coming to you to seek a waiver to this purchasing policy so that we can award the bid to one of these two bidders. I will so move. Okay. Yeah. We have a motion and a second. Before you do that, you have something else to present. I have, to yes, sir. I would also request, because of the time frame with which we're under the constraints that uh, part of the bidding process and the submittals, um, I would request that we would also accept the lowest bid mm -hmm. out of the two. Uh, the difference being that one came in at 617000 and change, and the other one came in at 675000 and change. Um, with that, I would seek to accept the lowest bid 
on mm -hmm. this. I do believe that the town manager gave you a packet to yes. include um, options, right? Okay. Um, some of the options that we're exploring right now are discussions with the treasurer and the finance department to seek which one will be best in our best interest. Both bids came in over the warrant article. However, with the pre -per, uh, the prepayment mm -hmm. purchase policies that they have in place with the um, bidding organizations, I'm sorry, with the uh, the bidders, there are options to lower the cost. With that, we will stay within and under our warrant article price point. So we are still, like I said, exploring the prepayment options, but we would seek from you the ability to award the bid to the lowest bidder at this time. Excellent. If you want that included okay, in the please, motion, please, Mrs. I'll Willis Lee. No, I, I don't have any questions. I, I, it, it's tough to bid on fire apparatus. Yeah. Um, they, they're, they're constantly, with, with the conditions that they have to build them to and the standards they have to build them to, obviously that's part of the reason why the price keeps going up and up and up. But uh, I know Pierce is a fine piece of apparatus, and I, I got no problem with this bid. Mr. Waddell? No, I mean, it, you had it open for three weeks, and you only got the two bids, right? Sir. So... You left it open for another two weeks. You still only have the two bids, right? That's true. And this is good stuff. It is. You know, uh, we we built a very uh, very robust truck. We feel very confident this is going to serve us for the next ten years frontline, ten years reserve, as I had come to you before. Um, I have no stipulations in that. I feel that this is going to be an excellent product, um, and it happens that the lowest price point actually matches our warrant article. So. Thank you, Mrs. Wolseley. Uh, great job. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, I agree with the finance director on uh, doing the whole uh, payment all up front. That's going to save you a lot of money. Where you were authorized for the 615000 is that going to help you to outfit because you're going to have to buy some extras, are you, for the new apparatus, well, hose, et cetera? Have you there, there are, that out yet? With the prepayment options that are on the table, Correct. there are two. Uh, option one allows us about $9,500 leeway. Right. Option two is significantly greater, about $27,000. Right. Um, to that end, th as any construction project, we've seen it at the Beach Fire Station, we've seen it at the Winnicott Road Fire Station, and anybody who's done construction knows there's several um, change orders that go into that. Correct. There may be something that is newer technology. It may In a year and a half, it'll take 200 business days to build this truck, which is essentially a year's time. Yeah. In a year's time, something may come along that okay. outfits the truck better. So in essence, prepayment will bring the price point down for this truck by whichever number is chosen by the prepayment options. Mm -hmm. um, however, the additional uh, costs for upgrading parts right. of the truck are there. This warrant article was not written specifically to allow uh, the inclusion of equipment. Okay. Um, I have, in, in discussion with what we had last week, I have talked to Lieutenant McMahon and directed him to give me a report based on um, the age of the hose that we have. We have found that we're hose testing this month, and I think that I brought that up last Good. week too. Uh, we have hose that's 36 years old, currently still testing mm -hmm. and, and staying on online. It's not our first piece, but it's still there. We would need to buy new equipment for this truck eventually. However, as part of the warrant article, that's not part of that. But you have, with the full payment option, you still have some leeway. So in case there's other technology or whatever orders, that you absolutely. need to add, Correct. that still gives you a window and you'll come in under or at that is the, goal. the price. Very nice. Very nice job. Thank you, ma'am. Mr. Bean. I have no questions. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. We have the first and second. All those in favor, unanimous. What? Thank, Thank you. you very much. You've got to remember that until you authorize one of the options, correct, this bid exceeds the appropriation right. amount. So I can't sign this contract Do you want a motion? because you have not authorized one of them. Even if it's just the okay, authorize both of them if you can. It has to be worked out with the treasurer. Yeah. But then that the bid amount would be within the appropriation. So if it's acceptable, then I will move that we uh, that we authorize option two, which is the pay in full in front, which saves us the most amount of money. Well, I'd authorize both of them because if the treasurer comes back and says she can't do that without borrowing. Oh, okay. Then, then you authorize the option. option one or two, or two predicated on what's the best right. for the, option from the treasurer. The treasurer. Right. I'll second okay. that. Okay. Thank All you, those in favor? Thank you for thinking of that. Anonymous. Don't want to get us in trouble with someone. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, before, before the chief yeah. goes, well, we've got him here, and I would like to ask you him a do. question. You do. I have a captive yeah. audience. Wait, wait, yes. 
Um, fireworks. Yes. And we have a, a memo here, dated January 2015, from uh, John Barthelmus, the uh, Department of Safety, Division of Fire Safety, uh, on uh, the uh, fireworks. Uh, I know I've had people from the beach complain especially about people, uh, just people buying fireworks and going off and shooting them around there. Is there any leverage you have, and there are some uptown too, I know in my neighborhood, uh, it's a fire hazard, it's a safety hazard, and aside from the, t the precinct-sponsored actual fireworks display, is there a way for you to coordinate with the state? Is there a way for us to set something in place to, to allow us to uh, enforce and, and do a, a um, you know, confiscate? If you're out there with fireworks and you're going to be, can, can the police confiscate fireworks or can, have we some leverage to tell okay, people well, they can't do Why are you asking us? the fire chief that for? Mm -hmm. That, that because certainly can't that, speak for the fire. This department. is and the that's division true. of the, fire safety. It is, and, and the fireworks does fall under the fire marshal's uh, division. Mm -hmm. However, enforcement for illegally obtained or illegally shooting fireworks is more police side of things. Which we deal with display fireworks, okay. so everything that's going on at the beach on Wednesday night, we have already signed the permits and move forward with that. Okay. Uh, when it comes to personal fireworks, something that you may go buy at uh, Phantom Fireworks or what that might be, that becomes a policing issue. Generally speaking, if somebody lights off fireworks and causes a fire, mm -hmm. we show up. Um, before that, not so much. Okay. If there's an enforcement issue, we, we turn to the to the other side of the... Thank you very much. So, thank you, sir. Thank you, you very much. Good night. Mr. DeRocher. Sound isn't too great on your committee broadcasts oh. either. Sound is kind of hard to pick you guys up. I don't think that's up. what we're discussing here either tonight, Mrs. Wolseley. Well, that's, yeah. We try to be as quiet as possible. <laughs> I saw your, uh, I saw your most recent meeting. You have that lady that just moved to Hampton. I yes. saw her. She's very good. She is very nice. I had talked to her. Don't worry about Thank you, Commander. Yeah. Appreciate Thank you, it. sir. Anytime. So I give you a little uh, little handout of what I plan to talk about tonight. I'm going to throw a bunch of numbers at you so that you at least get a uh, an opportunity to uh, understand what they are. The Energy Committee is working on two related projects. Okay. Our objective is to obtain a electric rate which has very little fluctuations, hopefully fixed price, but, but that may not be possible over a long period of time and get the best rate we can on the market. Uh, in 2012, just to give you a little reminder, in 2012, we decided, the manager decided, to go out into the wholesale market, the third-party market, to obtain our electric supply. While we were working on it, prior to working on that, we were paying anywhere from eight cents a kilowatt hour to 13, 15 cents a kilowatt hour. Okay. We went out to the market. In fact, currently right now, the unitil rate is 15 and a half cents a kilowatt hour. The June through November projected rate is 6.99 cents a kilowatt hour. Wow. We went out to the wholesale market. As a part of doing that, we formed an arrangement with an energy broker, Titan Energy, who really acts like a real estate agent. Uh, they go out for bids to the marketplace. Real estate agent, I, ref I understand very well. They go out to the marketplace uh, with bids. They come back with a low bids. Their salary is paid by the supplier. It's not paid by the town. It's paid by the supplier. And they actually get about a tenth of a cent a kilowatt hour. So if you're using you know, a couple million kilowatt hours a year, that's not too bad a paycheck you know, for one, one little customer. The, the contract was awarded both for the small G2 accounts as well as for the wastewater treatment plant, which is a large G1 account. The contract was awarded to Integris Energy. Uh, for the G2 accounts, we ended up with a three-year fixed price 
of 6.78 cents as opposed to what we have been, had been paying. On the wastewater treatment plant, we started out with an index or market-based pricing arrangement, which we ended up changing somewhat in December of 2013 to a block pricing concept. Mm. The bottom line on all that with the wastewater treatment plant, with all the changes, over 15 months, we averaged 7.95 cents a kilowatt hour. So we did pretty well with it. I'm not overly happy with how it worked out, but we did pretty well with it. As compared to the variable rate from Unitil, which was 9.75 cents. So we actually saved a few bucks in the process of doing that. Our contracts with Integris expire this September. So we're currently out looking at the marketplace uh, to see what it looks like. Where is it going? Is it going up? Is it going down? You know, how long is it going to last? We're trying to look out about five years to see where everything is where, every, where everything is going. Okay. Uh, I've asked Titan to to talk to Integris to see what they were you know possibly looking at, and I've asked somebody else. Uh, Tom Withka, as a matter of fact, uh, who is now retired in his own business, and I've asked Tom to also take a look and, and give us a proposal for, for what he thinks and, and how he would operate as opposed to Integris. Right now, Integris is looking at uh, starting on, in September at a rate of 8.21 cents a kilowatt hour and escalating at about 1.5 to 2% a year for four or five years after that. So not a fixed price, fixed for a year and that's it, but with some escalation factor. I think we can do better. Uh, I think we can do a lot better than that out in the marketplace. I think Constellation can give us a better deal. So, I mean, that's where we are with, with the pricing. The, the second project that we've been working on is a solar system. Uh, before I go into that project, let me explain a couple terms to you, whether you're uh, uh, familiar with them or not, I don't know. Okay. The first term is net metering. Okay. Net metering is a law that was passed a few years ago in New Hampshire. It's probably the weakest one in the country. But what met, net metering does, uh, let's say, you, let's say you, you're, you have a facility like a solar, wind, geothermal facility. You produce 100 kilowatts of energy. If you only use 90, you get a credit for 10 kilowatts. It comes off your bill. That's net metering. In 2014, Senate Bill 98 passed and allowed, and the governor signed, a concept known as group net metering. And I'll talk about that in a couple minutes. The second term that we should talk about is a power purchase agreement, a PPA. Under a power purchase agreement, the contractor, whoever it may be, installs the system, owns the system, operates the system, and maintains the system over a period of time. It could be five years, could be ten years, or whatever, whatever it happens to be. At the end of that period of time, the customer, us, the town, would actually take over and buy the system and own the system. But during that period of time, five years or whatever, uh, we would pay the contractor a utility rate, nine, ten cents, kilowatt hour, whatever, whatever it turns out to be, depending upon the size of the plant. Okay? About, I don't know, maybe 14 months, months ago, we started looking at a strategy and a plan to bring solar into the town, primarily to help with our utility rates, not so much in the short term, but in the long term. If you own the generating capability, you can definitely take some real advantage off of that. Also, on the less esoteric side, uh, with owning your own facility, it helps the town become a little greener. I think it's you know better publicity for the town, 
and you're also helping to reduce the reliance on fossil fossil fuels, which is which can be a big plus. The result of our effort, we had decided amongst the committee on a strategy to start small, 100 kilowatt facility, use a power purchase agreement under which there would be no risk and no appropriation requirement from the town. We would start small, we would evaluate the facility, the, the capability, what's it do for you, let our, let our, our uh, employees learn how to operate the system, learn how to maintain the system. And then, if we were happy with it, we would take it, take the system over. But we could also, as a small system, we could transfer it to different facilities, like the police department. We could put one on the town hall, and that type of thing. Prior to that, one of the things we looked at was use of the landfill. In 2009, Weston and Sampson Engineering Company did a feasibility study on using the landfill site and they actually looked at five different renewable energy concepts. They looked at wind, they looked at solar, they looked at geothermal, they looked at using methane gas, and they determined that the landfill site was not at all feasible, economically feasible, primarily because of the exorbitant cost you're looking at it at a one megawatt system on a landfill, the cost would probably be in the seven to ten million dollar range. The payback on that is is horrendous. It just didn't make any sense. Technically, yes, it's feasible. You can do anything with enough time and enough money. But it didn't make sense financially. Go back to our, our request for proposal. We used we issued the RFP. In right around, I have to time it now with my vacation. <laughs> we issued the RFP right around the 1st of March. And the bids were due in the 1st of April. We had a site visit on the 4th of March. One company showed up. We walked through the snow. We looked, up, looked at the facility. On the 1st of April, we had absolutely no responses, no bids. Mm. A couple of days later, I talked to Revision Energy, who was the one who'd made the, the site visit. And it turns out, when they did their math, the small 100 kilowatt system, the rate that they would have to charge us was considerably more than the rate that we were getting through the third party market. So it didn't make any sense. About two, three weeks ago, uh, the manager forwarded me an email from, from some gentleman that he says he met. I don't <laughs> think it was. I know who it was. But it wasn't, it wasn't Fred. At a convention. And they have a concept. I met with a gentleman in my office known as Kate's Place over at, <laughs> over at the Hatch. I met with them, talked to them. Uh, we had two gentlemen here last Thursday night to give us a presentation on their concept. And their concept is this. They use the concept or the law, the new bill, of group net metering. And their proposal or their concept is to install a large system on the landfill site about a one, one and a half megawatt system on a landfill site. The system would be owned, not owned, but the, the system would have a host. Group net metering requires a host. The town of Hampton would be the host. And the host would have a bunch of customers. In our case, the customers would be all the meters that we have in town. 26, 27 different meters. Each one of those meters would be able to take advantage of net metering. So when you can take advantage of net metering, there's payback, there's credit coming in. And the host would divvy up 
the demand based upon load factors, based upon how much each customer uses. And the whole project would be based around a power purchase agreement. So this company, if we, you know, if we use them, this company, which is New Hampshire Solar Garden, would install the system, they would own the system, they would operate the system, and they would charge us a utility rate. Where we are with that right now is, number one, I wanted to brief you folks on it, just to let you know this is what we're doing. Uh, but also, uh, our committee will be generating a request for proposal, sort of geared around this concept. Uh, if New Hampshire Solar Garden is the only company that offers this capability, then we could go work with them. More than likely, I'm sure there's a couple others that would like to get in, and we would go out with bid and proposals and see how it worked out. My gut feeling is that the utility rate that they would be charging is probably going to be more than what we're going to get on the third-party market, you know, based on the projections, particularly what I looked at this morning. So it may not be a feasible thing, but I think it's worth going through the exercise and it's to try to take a look at what's the best way to go. Now, what New Hampshire Solar Gardens is looking at is not a one, two, or three-year term. They're looking at a 20 or 25-year term. So over the long run, over 20 years, it may be more advantage, more advantageous to go with that type of a system. Don't know. Got to do the numbers. Got to pick it out. Our new gal, Julie is an expert in financial analysis, so she can help us out. That's where we are. I'm not asking for any permissions or anything else. We're just we're, we're moving on, and, and hopefully in the, in the near future we'll come back and, and say, this is what we'd like to do. We'd like your permission to do it. Before we go to the board, Mr. Welch, would you like to say something? I think he summed it up excellently. That system's out there, it's available, it's, it's been talked about for some time now, and it's starting to get to the point where it's available. Um, we'll have to look at the dollar figures. Exactly. Mr. Waddell? Where do I go first? Thank you. Yes. Wow. <laughs> I listen so intently, I, feel I could special. see it. <laughs> no, I'm very interested in it. it. It's very interesting what you've done. I think, <coughs> I think pursuing it, I mean, we're mm -hmm. not doing anything right now. I think pursuing it's a good thing. In Massachusetts, it turns out a lot better, doesn't it? In every state except New Hampshire, it turns out a lot better. Yeah, because that Massachusetts is very, very strong in net metering and renewable energy. I think New Hampshire is very slowly coming around, but I have a friend that does when, when they want to shut down Reggie, you have to wonder. So I have a friend that does this this kind of thing company. And he, does, and he lives in New Hampshire and doesn't do any business in New Hampshire. Right. <laughs> because for an individual, it's not worthwhile, the net right. metering and stuff. But, I, no, I think it's a good concept, and I think it's, you know, really interesting. And, you know, it might work out, it might not work out, but mm -hmm. investigating it doesn't cost a penny, right? Doesn't cost us anything. So keep going. Yeah. And, and I, I can do my job. Yeah. Mr. Your, your committee works for free, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Bridal. No, I think you guys are doing a good job. <clears throat> uh, always looking for ways to help us save money, but also are looking at energy efficiency and, and everything else. So keep up the good work. Mrs. Wolseley. This field is changing so rapidly, I think, and moving so rapidly <laughs> that it's probably kind of tough to keep up with it. You know, one th one thing I, I need to ask you, because this is the thing that makes me nervous, the focus seems to be locating whatever you're reviewing on the landfill, and you know that makes me nervous with the landfill, yep. because we only have the top. Uh, we do not have a bottom cover mm -hmm. or bottom catch, whatever, vinyl. And if we pierce that top cover, that scares me. I'm assuming it's because that's the highest point in town. Is, uh, is there any other potential well, locations? The system, 
a couple of parameters. Okay. A one megawatt system will, solar system, will <coughs> occupy about six, seven acres of space. Mm -hmm. There's 38 acres on that landfill site. Oh, yeah. Some of it's high, some of it's not. Mm -hmm. Number two, you have to have a southern exposure, mm -hmm. which that has. Yeah. Uh, we looked at, under the small system concept, 100 kilowatt system concept, we looked at using the wastewater treatment plant. And if I used just the flat roof space of the wastewater treatment plant buildings, the largest system we can put on there turned out to be 168 kilowatts. And that's not considering load factor. That, you know, that doesn't really get you an awful lot. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it, the wastewater treatment blowers mm -hmm. take in more juice than that. So that really doesn't get you anything. There is space over at the wastewater treatment plant, but it's being used. And I've been told I can't use it. So, <laughs> but what, but, gar what yeah, guarantee? I can understand. That's fine. Huh? On the, just uh, how can we be reassured that putting the equipment on top of the landfill, which does worry me, yeah, uh, is not going to, in some way, sink in or puncture or well, it, I don't know yeah. the technology. <clears throat> I mean, my my take is that the membrane that's on there would probably have to be removed uh, at least at least in an area that we're going to install yeah. number one i've instructed new hampshire solar and anybody else that we're talking to that we must have des approval oh God, and they must yes. oversee yeah that mm -hmm. and I think they're pretty well aware that you know if we have to remove or disturb the membrane, it has to be replaced. That's a part of the project. That's mm -hmm. a part of the cost factor. The engineering effort that goes into a system like that, just the engineering effort mm -hmm. to, to design it, is probably hundred to hundred and hundred and thirty thousand dollars just an engineering effort. Remember, this is you know for a one megawatt system, we're probably looking at like I said, seven to ten million dollar project. Because mm -hmm. it cost us four and a half million to close the landfill, we're still paying mm -hmm. uh, additional fees for monitoring and so forth. But uh, I just I was just concerned about that membrane yeah. and and what would possibly happen because it is a great location. There's oh, no absolutely. doubt about that. It, it's perfect location. The best location. And you'll find and I. This company that we're talking to, New Hampshire Solar, has, in fact, he just sent it to me. Um, he has currently working on four installations in progress mm -hmm. throughout in different parts of the state, and they're all on landfills, every one of them. Mm -hmm. But where our landfill has just that one membrane on the top, we saved a fortune by not having to dig everything up, put the right. membrane on the bottom, and then cover it. So I just... Wanna yeah, I don't. I'm, be, I, I'm not careful. an expert on on landfills or any of that stuff, so I'm not sure what what that would entail. However, yeah, I, I'm sure whatever engineering company gets involved in, in DES can Good. probably tell us. Good questions, Mr. Bean. I have no questions, Richard. Thank you. Thanks, sir. <clears throat> and um, thank you. I think that you've done a pretty good job. It sounds to me that from when I was on the Energy Committee before you were there, that a lot of the things that you're saying are still very similar. Absolutely. Yeah. The only thing that's just a word on on energy rates, electric rates. Uh, it looks like throughout the rest of fifteen and sixteen, they're going to stay pretty low. Uh, I looked at some stuff this morning that says you may be looking at maybe six six cents a kilowatt hour for the next year or so. Uh, gas prices, you know, yeah. we know natural gas kind of drives a little bit. Gas prices are are really not going up that much. They're not going to go up that much. So, I mean, right now they're sitting right about today was, according to Henry Hub, was $2.81 a, a million BTUs. Mm -hmm. It may go up to 3, 3.2.
that's not a lot of change. And that's over the, that's over the next. And I'm looking out to 2018 yeah. with those. So. Well, thank you very much. We appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks, John. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we have Greg Grady about the 15th annual Hampton Beach Master Sand Sculpting. Wherever you prefer. Stand for a while, I've been sitting. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Chairman Griffin. Good evening, Selectman and Edger Welch. Uh, it's Greg Grady, 120 Kings Highway. I'm here on behalf of the Hampton Beach Village District to speak to you and ask your support for the 15th annual Master Sand Sculpting Competition. Uh, this year we'll feature 10 world-class artists uh, vying for over $16,000 in prize money. A uh, little rundown on the itinerary. The event starts with uh, on June 11th with us setting up the lights down on the beach. Uh, June 12th we'll be delivering the sand. Uh, June 13th through the 17th we'll be constructing the sponsor site with the actual competition June 18th through the 20th. On the 20th, we'll have uh, People's Choice voting between 1 and 3. The awards will be announced at the Seashell stage at uh, 9 p.m. with a special fireworks display at 9.30. Uh, viewing this year will be through July 5th with the removal on July 6th. Um, we're here to ask for your support in the following areas. Uh, I met with uh, Director Jacobs earlier this week, and he gave us our blessings, um, uh, his blessings, rather. Um, it, um, past years, what the t Public Works has done is uh, let us use 500 feet of the wooden snow fencing along with uh, 50 posts. Uh, they deliver it down the beach. Uh, if we can get it delivered sometime before the 11th, say the 8th, 9th, or 10th, and uh, we'll set it up and then to pick it up on July 7th after the event is over, or July 8th, we have a rain date in case anything happens. And just to, uh, on the police department, just to notify the police of uh, all the goings on, uh, on June 11th we'll be closing down the actual uh, sidewalk um, <clears throat> from the Seashell stage north to D Street. Uh, and then on June 12th we close off the whole area down there where the, I guess it's the bus drop off area um, from 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. And then again on the reverse on July 6th when we remove it all. Um, typically what I do is uh, drop off the itinerary to the dispatch down at the police department so they can put it on the roster. Um, in, in past years we had asked for uh, increased presence of the police department on the actual competition nights, the 18th, 19th, and the 20th, only because in, in those hours there if something was to happen uh, uh, it should be very difficult to recreate the hours because they're on a timed event. And uh, it, it's, we haven't had any problems. One year they had actually put the eye in the sky there, um, you know, which uh, would leave it up to Chief Sawyer if, uh, what he would like to do down there. But um, I'm open to anything, but we haven't had any problems. Knock on wood, we won't have any. Um, so um, that's it, basically. Um, the, I'd like to put it out for volunteers. Uh, Kim Baroni is heading our volunteer program this year. Uh, we're looking for volunteers from June 12th through the 6th. Uh, you can reach uh, the three-hour shifts from 6 a.m. to 9 p.m. Anybody wishing to volunteer can contact Kim at 918-6652. Or they can also sign up at HamptonBeach.org. Uh, go to the Sand Sculpture page, and there's a link right there where they can sign up and, and volunteer. Um, that's about it. Thank you. Um, Mr. Walsh, do you have anything to um, mention about uh, how this would be affected <clears throat> this year by any budget concerns compared to in years past? No, we, we do this every year. Uh, it's a matter of uh, providing uh, material uh, at the beach site, and uh, we're capable of doing that. This shouldn't have any impact at all. Okay. Mr. Bridal. No, Greg, you have 14 years. You've done an excellent job with us. It yeah. brings a lot of good yeah. quality event to the beach. Uh, I look forward every year to going down. Um, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll do what we can to help you. Uh, but I, I want to thank you for, for doing this. I know it's a, it's a personal thing for you mm -hmm. to do this, and you guys have done a great job of bringing that here. And it's, it's a wonderful event this town has down there, thanks to you. Thank you. Mrs. Wilsley. 
Yeah, I agree. Uh, Fred, do we need a formal motion to authorize I, Greg's request? I would think so. I'd, yes. be so. I'd be happy to move uh, that we authorize your request per your memo of May 7th. Mr. Bean? I have no question, sir. And Mr. Wardell? No, thank you for what you do. It's great. It's a great event, and I don't think you, can, you can't you can't buy that kind of publicity oh, that right. that event no. brings no, to no. the Hampton no. Beach and to the town. I mean, it's just phenomenal. Yeah. So, yeah, great job, and I, I support it 100 percent, 150. Did I get a second? Um, I, I have. It. Yeah. Good. Thank you very much again for all that you've done. Thank you. Does anyone else have any other discussion? I, I just want to thank Greg for his email response to our hearings on the uh, problems, uh, parking, et cetera, at the beach. That was very well, very well spoken, and I appreciate what you sent to us. Was that you or was it your father? Thank you. No, that was me. Um, well, it was some, my son, you, 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 you hear about yeah. also. But, um, and I will say on that note that I, I've seen in just a short time uh, a, 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 a change down there. I think I don't know if it was what it was, but I've seen a change down there, um, which is amazing to me. So, Good. Thank you. Great Thank job. you. All those in favor? Unanimous. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Have a good night. Thanks, Greg. Now moving on to the town manager's report. Well, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, and although I think we've gone over several of these items already, but I'm going to do them again. The State Department of Resources and Economic Development, otherwise known as DREAD, uh, we'll be holding their annual community meeting at the State Park Operations uh, Center on Saturday, May 16th from 9 to 11 a.m. That's the Oceanfront Pavilion Conference Room. The public is cordially invited. Please go down and... and uh, if you have a problem, please say your piece. If you have a compliment, say your piece, too. So they have both sides of the issue. Uh, Hampton Post number 35, the American Legion, will be holding their Memorial Day exercises on Monday, May 25, at 8 a.m. at the Hampton Beach Marine Memorial. Uh, the Memorial Day parade will commence at 11.30 a.m. at the Winnicott parking lot next to the fire headquarters. And there will be an outing at the Hampton Academy that will follow at 12.30 p.m. after the exercises up at the cemetery. The assessing department, which we talked about a little earlier, has begun the process of measuring and listing properties within the community. We have not, there are a number of properties that have been not, not been measured and listed in a number of years. And we want this process to be fair and equal for everybody in the town so we're operating on the same basis for everyone. It's the purpose for doing this. If the owners of these properties have questions, please call our assessing department uh, when, and, and ask the questions that you need to have answered. Uh, the individual performing the revaluation and the pickup material will have photo IDs issued by our police department. The Department of Public Works will be holding a household hazardous waste day uh, for the 53B district. Uh, this year it's on May 30th. It will be held at the Department of Public Works yard on Hardard's Way from 8 a.m. to 12 noon. And Mr. Chairman, just so everyone know, knows, I awarded today a bid to uh, Plowed Sand and Gravel Corporation of Sunnycook, New Hampshire, as a low bidder of three bidders for aggregate materials to be purchased by the town. Yeah. That's it, sir. Okay, questions for the town manager's report? Mr. Bridal? Nothing, thank you. Mrs. Wolseley. Um, I see that Aquarian is going to be working on Ross Avenue and then 11, 13, 14, and 15th Street replacing the water main. Does this have any impact on DPW? It obviously has an impact from inspection and, and, and maintenance of the, of the patch and so forth. You don't think, well, roads being dug up? or It's they great that they're replacing the mains. They, they are being dug up and they are working with Public Works on okay. it. So Public Works is aware of it. Uh, they are also uh, replacing gas mains on King's Highway. Oh. And that's in progress at the moment. There are a number of gas main problems going on in town. Um, <laughs> they are going to be in installing a new gas main uh, on one of the streets that we're going to be paving next month. Ooh. We have told them that they need to get in there and they're going to have to take special precautions in installing the main and doing special compaction uh, on those trenches. And they're going to have to guarantee the trench for five years. Ooh. If it fails, they'll have to redo it and repave the street. So if they're not there in time, they would have to come back to the selectmen for a, uh, a waiver of a five-year moratorium. Okay. Um, today, I noticed that the sweeper was out uptown. 
sweeper was sweeping. We are actively sweeping the entire community. We have swept much of the beach. Um, and you'll notice the, uh, the electronic signs are out advising people of the fact that we're out sweeping. Uh, our plan is to try to get the majority of the uptown uh, center finished and the side streets. They've been th through this area as well. Yeah. Uh, just so that we can get away from the, the heavy traffic that's going to come within another month or so. Right. And we just don't want to be out there doing that. Makes a big racket, time. so you'll know it's out there. Uh, they're not silent pieces of equipment, <laughs> no. Um, do we have a draft of a letter yet? We're coming up on June, and the flood drop dead date is September 15th. Do we have anything ready to mail out to residents to warn them to get going on their flood insurance if they haven't got it now? I believe that uh, we, we've been actively working on that. Uh, conservation has taken a lead along with the planning department. Good. So we're working towards uh, fruition of that problem. Because I know the commissioners are worried about that as well. And uh, last, uh, I mentioned, I think it was a week or two ago, about the non-contract, uh, non-union raises. Last year we went to great pains to put together a protocol that any raises would be put in place in April 1st of any given year. Um, last year, uh, the you mentioned something the other night about the problem being with the default budget so we wouldn't be doing the non-contract raises this year. But the 2014 budget was a default budget as well. So kicking off that budget into this year, should we not have sufficient money to do the... You have funds available in the, the selectman's discretionary account for merit raises. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a default sum. It's very small. It's less than 1%. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, it's probably closer to a half a percent at this point. Well, last year we had $21,744. And there were 39 employee, uh, 37 employees. Some of those are gone because I was looking at the sheet I have from April right. 2014. Yeah. Um, and the uh, cost of living, I think, from March 2014 to March 2015 is under 1%. Mm -hmm. We have any, uh, will you be coming to us because April 1st is gone and I'd kind of like to hold with our our uh, commitment if we're going to do anything. Uh, that's something that we're going to be talking about with the department managers. Okay. Um, one of the things that, that we tried to make very clear uh, is if the regular budget, and I know the board worked very hard on coming up with uh, uh, changes in, in wages for non-union employees last year, mm -hmm. and you incorporated those materials into the budget. Right. Uh, the budget did not pass at the fall pass, so none of those raises that were incorporated within the budget will be given because the budget did not pass, and they are not part of the default budget. But wasn't the default budget predicated on the 2014 figures? The default budget is, is based upon the figures from the previous year. Right. Okay. Those raises had already been given. They already had those raises. Right. Uh, but you had predicated the budget uh, for 2015 for raises that would become effective on April 1st. Okay. Those will not be given because that budget did not pass. So that appropriation was not made. And they can't. Unless you pay the increase in wages before December 31st, it cannot be included in the default budget well, by we law. we paid the increase in wages but in that was 2014. For the, that was for the previous year. Okay. That's and, a little and, confusing. Yeah, you're doing it on April on an April 1 schedule. So okay. uh, there will be no raises this year except from the selectman's discretionary account. Okay. And the board's given me no instructions with regards to that. I mean, that's something we're going to bring up. Okay. Um, that's the only account those those raises can be made from, and I believe okay. there's $21,000 in that account. I was just a little puzzled by that, so yeah, the, the, thinking. The, the rule of thumb is that as you go along during the course of the year, if you have an employee uh, that the board votes to grant a raise to who's a non-union employee, um, and that raise is given before December 31st, mm -hmm. or is otherwise indicated in a contractual obligation mm -hmm. for a, a time certain, then those raises will be given, and they, and they will become part of the default budget automatically okay. because they are contractual in nature. If that situation does not occur, then the raises will not be given because they don't constitute a contractual, contractual raise for the following fiscal year. It gets very confusing, but that's... Well, I thought by doing April 1st that we were doing the nine months in the given year, which would overlap to the three months of no. the following year. No. no. 
No, you're giving them a raise. With, uh, let's just say you give every every employee a raise of a dollar. Right. It becomes effective April 1st, Correct. and you're paying them a dollar right along. Right. That will go into the next fiscal year and keep on going forever right. as part of their wage. If you wish to increase it again, that would become effective under your vote on April 1st the Correct. following year, where they knew some of money. Right. You don't have a new sum of money. That's the problem, because the budget didn't pass. So therefore, it's not on okay. there. They're still getting paid the okay. same wage with that $1 increase okay. in it. So. Any other questions? Not at the moment. I thank okay, you very Mr. much, Bean. Fred. No, sir. My pleasure. Yeah, I. So that's the same question I asked you today. Yes. Because I have been asked about that. So there will be no. You uh, have a discretionary account, and we will get to that probably before you go on to your summer schedule so that you can give me direction as to what you want to have done. Okay. And then we will follow that direction and bring that information back to you for your vote. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Waddell. Set. Okay, moving on to old business. Um, we're going to talk about the selectman goals. Mr. Chairman, you, you had asked, and I know Jamie did a terrific job on this, um, asked us to sort of codify to, uh, to make this uniform. And we gave you a report based upon your conversation on April 7, uh, 2015. Uh, board identified issues uh, for goals for the board for the coming year. Uh, we also included, because you had department heads here, we also included yeah. their conversations and, and the goals that they thought they should have for the year. Uh, it's back to the board uh, with the information that uh, Jamie has correlated and, and put in writing. And um, actually, I think it's a very good job. And I think you should discuss it and, and decide whether or not you wish to move this and move forward with it. Okay. Did you want to start, Mr. Wardell? Thank you. Yes. No, I've read it. it. He did a really good job of summarizing. He did. What, uh, what when we all talked about and stuff. What I, what I was thinking was if, if we could somehow consolidate some of it, you know, into some more um, attainable goals. I mean, I, I don't know if we want to leave it with so many or somehow consolidate into a more general goals that we're going to be uh, – Focusing for which these would be subheadings under it. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not sure. That's that's my feeling. That it just seems like a, a very large list with with very specific steps and maybe a little more general. We can certainly do that. Matt, that's my thinking. So did you did you have any further? Um, no, it's fine. Okay, Mr. Bridle. Pretty much the same thing. It was kind of cumbersome. Uh, if we get if we could. Bring it together a little bit. I think it reduces it to like five or six main goals. Main right. goals. With okay. subsections underneath them. Right. So. Mrs. Wolseley? Who's going to do that? Well, well we're, I just. We're, and we're adding to that conversation right now. What would you suggest? I, I agree with focusing on main goals, but there are probably a couple of uh, extras or adjustments that I can see in the selectman's goals. Uh, as a board and also in the Department of Public Works. But uh, yeah, we're going to discuss this at a future meeting to just downsize it a little bit and consolidate it. That's fine by me. And we can we can bring you a proposal to do that. Okay. Yeah. See if we can't consolidate some more. Okay. And Mr. Bean. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Yes, Mr. Welch on that list and uh, the uh, deputy town manager did a great job on it, mm -hmm. and there, there are some good points there. I'm looking for uh, uh, now for uh, department heads, uh, whether it be legal, and I know uh, town councils are yep. working on some of those to actually produce warrant articles for uh, board vote, if not uh, perhaps private uh, citizen petition to include uh, zoning, uh, finance, uncompensated fund balance, uh, the $19 million we have in our trust fund um, to free that up. So um, actually getting into the execution phase by legal, by department heads to bring that forth so we can uh, move forward. And I'm looking at that in an expeditious manner. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. When we do have that um, further discussion, can we have um, Mr. Sullivan here? Certainly. So that we can discuss it. Absolutely. Also with him. Excuse me, any other old business? Seeing none, we'll move on to new business. New business, Mr. Waddell, Mr. Bridle. Nothing. 
Mrs. Wolseley. I have a motion uh, predicated on some of the discussion last week, just, I think, to clarify. Um, in uh, any year that the Hampton Municipal Budget Committee chooses to set up subcommittees with focus on specific topics or departments of interest, such meetings will take place outside the committee's regular monthly schedule. The protocol will be as follows. After a vote of the Budget Committee at a regular meeting to establish temporary subcommittees, the Chairman will ask the Selectman representative to have the Town Manager coordinate with the subcommittees and the requested department heads to schedule the times, dates, and locations of such work sessions. The intent of this motion is to facilitate the work of the subcommittees while minimizing disruption of department heads' activities and schedules. I think it's a little clearer if we have that down as a specific motion and goal of this board. Do I hear any motion, any second? Seeing none. You don't want to clarify the procedure for dealing with the <coughs> subcommittees? It doesn't happen every year, but this way there's a clear line of what's to be done. I'll second it just for discussion. Okay. I don't understand what we're talking about. Okay, that's what I had a kind of a feeling. I <clears throat> thought that we were going, I don't know. There was no specific motion, and I think if we're doing things and making decisions, we need to have a specific motion that we can refer to. I don't see this as terribly controversial. As the um, person that is the uh, representative, Mr. Bean, would you like to... I don't support the motion. Would you like to discuss it? I, I think our, our lines of communication are quite clear. Uh, I have uh, problems with an expanding committee having subcommittees. Uh, the motion itself does not address the bifurcation of command with those departments that come under the uh, Board of Selectmen. You wouldn't go to Mr. Welch for assessing. You wouldn't go to Mr. Welch for legal. That motion does not do it. I think it's a faulty motion both on uh, premise and on um, minutia. Thank you. Mr. Bridal. I'm all set. Thank you. Mr. Wardell. I already made mine. Okay. Would you like to comment further, Mrs. I, Wesley? I read the memo. I mean, I read the motion. If you don't want to go along with it, that's fine. So we have a first and a second. All those in favor of the memo? Motion. Motion. I'm sorry. And all those against? One, four, four against. Closing comments or other new business. Did anyone have any other new business? Closing comments. And we're going to have, we're going to be continuing our meeting from before. Yes. Do we need to make a, we're in recess right now. Do we have to make another? No, anything? you would okay. uh, just recess your non-public okay. session. You'd be going back into it at uh, we're, we're going to be uh, going back into another motion at um, 8.48. Thank you. No, we're going we're into back. another. We're going back into back our, into our recess. We're coming back to the recess. Yeah.